Lek and Greg, <coughs> Lek and Greg Vegan Camp, the second of February. <laughs> Lek and Greg Vegan Camp, the second of February 2023. We started bagging the mangoes that are left, still alive on the trees. So we will have mangoes, and some of them are even dropping inside the the bags. But it's normal, <coughs> mangoes. Young mangoes will drop anyway. When the tree produces mangoes, it will have a lot of children, as we say in Thailand. They have a lot of fruit, and the bad fruit or the fruit with bad seeds inside, the tree already knows. You can just drop them off because the reason why the fruit tree is giving fruit is to spread. So it spreads by giving the fruit, and there will be new fruit trees, the children of the fruit tree. Also, oh, yeah, it's. Part. The children of the fruit tree will be trees, but in Thailand we say that the fruit is also the children of the fruit, so it's a bit confusing, right? In certain areas in Thailand, these are already ripe. And many people think, if I ask somebody here in Lee what the name of this is, it's map, map prang, or bap prang, because they, they don't say m, they say use b instead of m. But anyway, these are the sour ones and the place I bought these is, is a little bit south of Chiang Mai and they are saying that these are called mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, My young shit This is because they are, they, they are also sour, sour sweet the maprang in that area is something that looks similar to this. They just have different leaves, but it's only sweet. So for them, the maprang is the one that is um, that only tastes like sugar. The mayong shit, like this, is the is the one that is sweet and sour. And there are many varieties of these, so it's it's mm. really the, for a foreigner. These might look the anything might look the same but there are like so many different types and stuff but that's what is exciting about fruit also what I like uh, is also that a little bit of chaos like uh, when I was rinsing the beans I was throwing the, the beans that I thought were not good and actually they sprouted around here so we have a, a ton of small bean plants so this is the first avocado in Lake and Greek Vegan Camp. Let's see if it survives. Lake is uh, complaining that the bugs are eating the leaves and stuff. But it's actually doing uh, quite okay compared to the mangoes. But we had a lot of flowers, but they didn't really develop into fruit. The mango leaf hoppers are still around. They, when we cut down the mango trees, they just seem to jump up over to the longan trees and live on them, but they might not be able to um, breed on the long ends. Let's see what happens. But otherwise these local types are more robust and we have fruit as we can see on, on these and they didn't die all of them. So that's good. Mm. So, so this is uh, jackfruit. And look at how soft it is already. It's so, a yeah, it's either rotten or very, very soft. I will probably open this soon just to see if it's. When you could I? When you could I? Jing Jin Leo, Fabian Kitwa, and he's so clear, Koba Tacha Dom. Yeah, it's very. Oh, Mark Lou. It's very, very. Smells really good. So I thought my job. <laughs> <laughs> we take it uh, away from where we live because the smell is strong and you don't want to sleep nearby nearby Greg when he's eating jackfruit <laughs> nearby anything but this is like wow very mushy and soft and sweet and oh. it's just like way too uh, ripe <laughs> no, I mean for me it's a bit even like this. It's a little bit disgusting. 
to me. Wait. Because it's just a little bit too soft. <laughs> what I'm thinking is... <laughs> I mean, this melts in your mouth. And it tastes, okay, it's like very pungent, strong taste. I like them when they're like crunchy, you know, it has texture. This is just like Aww. goo. And like always, the soil. Put your hands in the soil, take some soft soil or wet soil up and wash your hands with uh, to get off the sticky part of the jackfruit. This really helps, or oil also. So this is what happened this year. All the Namdok Mai, almost all, except that over there, there's one um, that still is not cut down completely with a little bit of fruit. But otherwise, all the other ones, because of the mango leaf hoppers, they just destroyed the whole crop. I believed in nature. I believe. I hoped that these trees could manage them themselves without any intervention and just let nature do what nature does. Uh, philosophy. And I had a change of heart. If if there are like 100, 150 trees, 200 trees in a very small area of the same type then or even different types of mangoes because these these uh, mango leaf hoppers they jump from species to species no problem if this continues we might need to cut every other tree so the spacing between trees gets bigger so they can't just jump from tree to tree and spread like wildfire but otherwise like having getting the experience of, of cutting them down uh, will help us manage it in, in the future because it will be much much easier like from bagging the mangoes and getting rid of all the other pests that we have here. Mm, yes, for sure. I mean this is a very valuable life experience to, to know how to manage mango trees I think if you like eating fruit and like mangoes and stuff and you don't want to use chemicals. Planted cassava after digging an old one up and eating it. So this is something you can always do: take out some uh, cassava and replant them. So last month was March, All right? During March, oh. <laughs> during March, we ate a lot of chaya because right now it grows really well. Like um, let's say three, four months ago. Chaya wasn't doing very well. I don't know really why, but they were not producing new shoots. But now they're just mm. shooting out. And it's really nice plants and we, Fabian and I, we like to eat it. The way I'm harvesting these is just like taking off like this. So I, have, I have the shoot and usually I, we can look under the leaves and see, okay, they, these are like beautiful. Uh, in the other seasons, they might be cracked and had a, have a lot of uh, dots on it, right? Dots and doesn't look. After I take one off, I, I just crack it off and throw it on the ground. Also, this provides some ground cover and stuff. I, I can take like multiple ones and then. So the harvest is pretty fast and then just. Uh, oh, so they don't grow too tall, too tall and it's hard to manage yes 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 and also if they grow too much there will be a lot of space for bugs so it's also to prune the the plant a little bit oh, 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 oh. D, D, D. and all uh, and all this white goo that you'll get on the hands but I, I keep it in the same direction and then I go to and wash them a little bit because I want to get this white goo off and I also want to get uh, the ants off And also the, the chaya, we use it as a fence, as a support. And, and so we, we don't have bamboo, because bamboo just gets eaten by bugs. And, and chaya doesn't get eaten by anything, because of the cyanide inside. Quite good amounts of tomatoes. And also we had some uh, quite some strawberries. This is like one of the last ones, but there, I can see there are new flowers, so there are new strawberries coming up too. Mulberry season. These mulberries are really tasty. 
I think one of the reasons why they're doing well is because they're nearby in the area where we are planting. Uh, yeah, we had a lot. Mm. Where we are planting other plants and we are watering this area. So, and these guys have roots that go very far around. You did a good job with this uh, dome. Okay, and, uh, Also, uh, so we, currently we have zero limes that are ready to eat, but we have the makam, which is the tamarind, sour tamarind, we can, which we use for making uh, the food very tasty and like have a sour thing. Uh, but uh, it seems like we, the, the limes are getting ready for, for the next season, so in, a, in a month or two we will have limes again, I think.